Hey everyone, welcome to the round table. We have Peter and Chris here for you. Amanda from Garden Moms, if you could begin your question. Hey everybody. Hi, thank you for joining us. Uh, I'm Amanda from Guide for Geek Moms and Crazy Amanda Reacts on YouTube. So thanks for joining. And um, actually my first question is for Peter. So it's been almost what, 25 years since the first Kung Fu Panda movie came out, which I don't want to think about because I was at the theaters, I think, with the first one. <laughs> so I don't, but well, I was you're, wondering- You're in luck because I think it's only been 14 years, but- Oh, yeah. is it 14? Yeah. Okay, well, look- You're my not master, as old as you thought you were. Yeah. <laughs> I Good still news. feel old. <laughs> but my question was, um, you know, what is it that attracts, you know, kids and so many to the franchise after all these years? That, um, well, the thing, I mean, the thing that makes any really successful franchise work and sequels work is a good lead character. That's really where it happens. That's where you can be uh, Spider-Man, Batman, James Bond, Austin Powers, and Poe is because you have a great lead character and you want to see them out in the world and reacting to things and doing things and stuff like that. That's really where the longevity of, of this uh, show is. Thank you. You're welcome. Right. <laughs> Tanya, you're up next. Hi there, I'm Tanya from lolalambchops.com. So you talked about how you need a good main character, but I think you probably also need a good villain too. And that's where um, Klaus comes in. That's so right. <laughs> so tell us about him and what viewers can expect. Well, uh, let me answer a little bit. I'll throw to you, Chris. But basically, uh, you know, somebody can only be as great as, their, as, as the forces against them. Um, so we came up with some really fun, literally weaselly, um, you know, villains and have the brilliant Chris Gear uh, playing Klaus Dumont. Chris, what did you find out about Klaus Dumont? Oh, I think, uh, lovely to meet you, by the way. Um, this is a, um, uh, a bit of a, a lifelong dream of mine to play an animated villain. But grow, growing up with them, I've always, I've always kind of pretended to do the voices and uh, and um, and how I would be if I were certain animals. But to be a weasel is, I mean, it already lends itself to being a weaselly type character. So <clears throat> that was that was immense fun. And the fact that Klaus and Baruka are both the baddies together then uh, the dynamic between the two of them was so interesting to explore um, that, um, I mean, we, we had several different sessions, some where I wouldn't see any animation, some where I'd see a rough outline of the animation, and then some where I'd see a, a nearly finished, completed uh, um, uh, stamp on it. So um, it was, it was a, an incredible experience for me and so much fun as well. So that's a win. Thank you. You were incredibly weaselly, by the way. Oh, thank <laughs> you. <laughs> Robin, go ahead. Hi, my name's Robin Davis from momthemagnificent.com. I'd love to hear from both of you on this question, if that's okay. I'd love to know what character from the series do you both relate to the most and why? Mm. I would say I would say I relate to Poe actually in real life because I try ever so hard at things and sometimes it doesn't work in my favor. Uh, however, I do keep going and that enthusiasm and perseverance towards completing your goals is something that's very admirable, which is why I think a lot of the uh, the, uh, the the viewers will will enjoy Poe this season because he, he never gives up despite all the odds. Yeah, I, I mean, it's hard not to uh, choose Poe there. I mean, I always say he's sort of a lovable loser who can kick butt. And it's just a, a really admirable quality. And I think, you know, everybody, I mean, the, the story of people who sort of feel like they don't fit in applies, tends to apply to everybody. You know, uh, everybody kind of identifies with that. Um, and, you know, also he's just fun. He's just fun and funny. But for me, I've also found that basically I relate to every single character in a show that I'm making because, you know, they all represent sort of different feelings and different emotions, too. Kathy, you're up next. 
Hi, I'm Kathy with Live with Kathy and BellerMommy.com. And both, I've got a question for both of you. One is, Peter, um, what is it that you would like your audience goers to learn from watching the series? And then, Chris, what is your, um, what would you like audience goers to learn from you, from your character? Um, I, 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 um, I think, um, First of all, I want people to have fun watching the show. And then I think also, you know, we put Poe in a situation here where he feels like he needs to prove himself and he needs to regain his title and sort of regain his stature. And of course, finding out that all of that, that's really important, you know, he never really lost. Um, and, uh, you know, I think one of the other really fun things about this particular sh version of our show is that it's fairly dramatic and we get, we get into some more drama and some deeper places uh, than sort of a regular kind of uh, cartoon series. Um, so I really enjoy that and basically to play it real, um, you know, as we go through that. And Chris. Um, I, I would say, I would say, um, uh, despite being a, a, a baddie in a way, um, I would say never, never give up on, uh, on, on the task ahead. I mean, Klaus and Baruka have, have uh, many obstacles uh, on their way, Ho obviously being the obvious one. Um, but um, the, the main thing that I would want the viewers to take away is to look after your siblings, because despite how annoying they can be sometimes and how maybe they make decisions that you don't necessarily agree with, at the end of the day, they are your siblings and you love them and you'll do anything for them. Yeah, and and uh, Chris Chris and uh, Della Saba, who plays Veruca, his sister, have the classic kind of sibling, re you know, relationship where they can be super tough on each other, but that never drops out. You know, their actual relationship never falls away. All right, next is T and Tegan. Hi, I'm Tegan. This is my mom, T. Um, we're here with Seth at LA. And my first question is for Peter. How has Poe evolved as a warrior and as a person, or in his case, as a panda since the first film? Um, well, he's been through a lot of changes. And if you watch all of the, the there are three movies and there are two previous uh, series, and you know, he kind of gets stronger and more confident. He becomes a master uh, uh, in that way. Um, but I don't think Poe ever really lost his sort of soft core and the the sort of uh the sort of um you know kid kid inside him and i love that part of him and that discovery which is very much you know in the performance of jack black and and actually very much just like jack really um so i wanted to keep that part um connected so actually really what we did is kind of strip away some of the changes that's happened to him and get him back to just the simple version of of poe and kind of who he was when we first met him which hasn't really changed and send him into a new adventure um, kind of in, the, in, in uh, the way that he's always been a sort of, you know, vulnerable and trying and, and kind of playing into all of those sort of things. So in terms of time, we're keeping, uh, you know, we're on the same timeline that we've always been with, with Poe the Panda, um, but he's facing some new uh, simple challenges in the show. Thank you. Next is Victor. Hi, Peter and Chris. Thank you for your time today. Uh, my name is Victor. I'm from uh, Fandads.com. Uh, in, in the previous like uh, series, Mr. Ping was always just like a background character, or he'll be in here now and then. But in this one, we see more of that connection between him and Poe, like kind of like that, how he shows up every now and then for him, like a force image, I guess you could say. Well, how, what, how important was that to show that relationship between them two? Uh, in this series, in this go around? Uh, yeah, it's really important uh, to show him. I mean, I love the character of Mr. Ping. James Hong, uh, who is 93 years old in 19, in the 2022 now, is incredible performer. He's so much fun. He has such a great playful spirit and it's just a great pairing with him and Poe. And I think the other thing is, you know, this is kind of a, uh, you know, they have a, a very tight bond as father and son, um, somebody who is always supporting his son through all the uh, tough times. And that's just a real pillar of strength um, for Poe. So it's great to have him show up, you know, 
in the, from the, for the emotional part of the story and for them to make a new connection. And then also James Hong is just so much fun. And it's like he, when, when we do lines with James, James will do it every line seven different ways and all of them work because they're so loaded with character and personality. I mean, he's just really fun to work with. So thumbs up on Mr. Ping. Thank you. Next is Olivia. Hi there, I'm Olivia Douglas from This and That with Olivia. Thank you both for joining us today. Um, my question is for Chris, what about um, the Kung Fu Panda franchise or the storyline of this uh, attracted you to it? Um, I think uh, like everyone, I've been a, a fan of the franchise growing up, but also I think as my son's growing older and I realize how quickly kids do grow older, that it's such a lovely thing to be able to introduce a character that I loved growing up to a new generation. And I think it's always my aim to, to perform in things that my, either my friends would enjoy, my family would uh, feel appropriate. <laughs> and, uh, but most importantly, that I can watch with my family. So as soon as this came about and I was lucky enough to get the role, I thought this is a great opportunity for me and my son and my wife to sit down of an evening and watch something together, which is fun and for all the family. So that was the main draw for me. We, you know, of course, a lot of the story, Chris didn't know uh, until he would get a script uh, going along. So he didn't necessarily know the arc of his character and where that's going, but he was definitely was into playing a villain and finding his Weasley voice. And uh, we had a lot of fun. Um, um, you know, I've, I've had a blast working with Chris and finding that villain and having fun with that. And I loved it, I loved it in the studio as well, Pete, when you would you would tell me what's about to happen. Little spoilers to kind of tease me into like getting excited about how how the episodes were going to progress. And I, I loved that. It was a, a secret little little present every time I came into the studio. It was awesome. Great. Thank you both. Hi, Peter. You mentioned, you know, Jack Black being in this. And for people like me who seen the first one 55 years ago. I'm kidding, 14, 14 years ago. <laughs> you know, he's like the OG Poe. So how did that come about getting him back on? And, and was he able to easily slide back into his role? Um, <clears throat> yeah, there, well, um, I, honestly, a lot of it is related to the fact that we were all sitting at home during a pandemic. And so was Jack Black, you know, but he loves this character. And so, you know, luckily, um, also someone who has worked with him on the movies is also, uh, you know, involved at Netflix and has a relationship with him. So, so we reached out and he was, uh, willing and, and available, um, to do it. Um, you know, I mean, Jack is Poe or Poe is Jack. So it's, it's really for him to come in and be able to do it. You know, he just nails it. And then the other fun thing is that I'm, I get so used to all his little vocal nuances and ticks and, you know, how he's like, I'm doing this. And, and so I'm like, oh, can you, you know, his big crazy stuff and his little things. And it's like, I'm so used to that, that it's like, I can go like, oh, wait, do one of those things where you kind of mumble, this, you know, or are you, you know, break into a heavy metal song kind of, kind of thing, you know, and all that stuff. And, you know, Jack just is that guy. He's not, there's no put on happening there. So uh, we had a blast uh, working on all of this. It's definitely That's awesome. Thank yeah. you. Oh, do you, oh, sorry. <laughs> So do you feel like there are more adventures in store for Poe after, after this adventure? Um, no doubt. I'm sure, um, you know, we want to keep going with this show and, um, uh, um, and who knows other projects. Again, it comes down to that thing where you just, when you have a great character, you can kind of keep, you know, you can keep telling stories just because it's going to be fun to watch this character deal with this situation. And you know that and it's uh, appealing. So I'm sure it's gonna keep going. It's too good, too much fun. So you're right, it is too good. It's way too much fun. And Chris, I wanna know, have you watched all the, um, the, 
the, the movies and, and the animation? And have you gone to Universal and sat in that theater and watched everything happen? The, the, the fun thing that springs to mind was yes. when we had a screening of two episodes uh, about three weeks ago, I think it was, at, uh, at DreamWorks. And A, I'd never been to DreamWorks before. B, I'd never seen an animation of something I'd done before. I've done lots of animation work, but normally you normally see them when they're on TV. So we went to the theater. Then Jack Black was there. So, and of course, this is the funny thing about uh, animation is that I met Poe and I met my sister and I met Peter for the first time um, at, at the studio. And then we watched it. And I have to say that I was just blown away by remember I'd seen all the phases of the animation so the first type the first outline outline of the character and how is the mouth might move and things like that when I see that and then you compare it to the final product which is just going to blow everyone away I mean it's so much fun the music colors the the characters uh the story is it's so so beautifully put together incredibly put together by all these I, I don't know how they do it. These, these, these people behind the scenes are just wonderful. So um, yeah, that was, that was something I, I will never forget. I remember coming home that night and I, was, I, I felt like a, like a child. It well, made me just kind of go, it's a, it, was, it was wonderful. So, and it reminded me of that feeling that I had when I left the cinema after watching you know, the original movies. So uh, to hand that on to the next, another generation, a new audience is just amazing. Thank you. So Chris, my next question is for you also. Could you tell us a little bit about how you got into your bad guy character before recording and what was the recording process like for you? The recording process, this is quite, this is quite funny actually. So we, we were, I think my first recording was halfway through 2020. And I just got an acting job in Canada. So I flew to, I flew to Vancouver with my family. We were able to all go because my son was homeschooling. And we were in the quarantine house. And that's when Peter got in touch and said, we're going we're gonna to start recording. And obviously I couldn't go anywhere. All the studios were shut. And, but luckily my, my wife is a, is a musician. So she is. She has all the recording equipment that one would need to to do a semi good job uh, of of recording something. So there I am in my closet, in uh, with coats over my head, doing doing this character, and I'm trying to find it. And I realise I'm getting really hot because I'm under all this stuff. And I just I I was so fed up that I just went crazy. And then the, uh, the character came, came from there. Uh, and I thought, uh, how, how fun would it be for this guy, despite being a baddie, to be constantly annoyed by, by weather and by his sister and by the fact that they haven't achieved their goals yet. He's constantly annoyed. <laughs> and so that's where the voice came about from sheer irritation of life. <laughs> um, so uh, yeah, I think I, I, that's the only thing I thank the pandemic for, I think. <laughs> there's, well, it there's, worked well, we love to hate them. <laughs> there's a, I mean, there's yeah. a fun thing that happens, uh, and I've been through this a lot with, with, with actors and voice actors, is that you write a character like this and they come in and say it like that. And then you go like, oh, okay, I see you do it like this. So I'm gonna change my writing. And they go like, okay, I'm starting to get your writing. And it keeps going like that. And you find this sweet spot. I mean, sometimes it takes a couple episodes, but you just find it out uh, where it goes. And so the writers have now see, heard the actor perform and they write to that a little more. And, this, and it goes the same thing for the actors. They get like, okay, I get what the feeling and the vibe is. And Chris did such a great job of that. It's really fun. Thank you. Um, so our next question is for Peter. And what are some differences or challenges when creating a series compared to a full-length film? Because I know there has been series with Poe and Kung Fu Panda, but they're definitely known for their films. So were there any challenges? Um, 
Well, I think this series is a little different. So, it, you know, obviously in a movie, you're telling one single long story, right? That's an hour and a half or whatever it is. Um, and in television, you are telling many, many, many stories. Um, so typically, uh, you know, like on a TV cartoon or a sitcom, you know, every, every episode is kind of a standalone little story. Um, and, uh, but what we've done with this particular series is really made one long story. It's kind of, you know, some modern TV where it's really just kind of like the first season we have 11 episodes and it's just, it's really, it's one single story. So that becomes a different kind of challenge, which is all right, we're not making these little episodes. We're making one huge th you know, thing that's four and a half hours or five hours or however, um, however long it is. So um, what you do is you go like, oh, I want to tell this part of the story. I want to tell this part of the story, but you haven't written it yet and you don't know what it is yet. And you have to kind of figure out how to make it all fit. So there's this great discovery process that happens along the way. And the same thing when I'm talking about with the, where the writing meets the actors, it's sort of like the writing meets the story too, because you write something and you go like, oh, that was a really good thing. Let's do more of that. Or, or this didn't work. Let's do less of that. Um, so you discover it, um, um, along the way. Um, but ultimately, you know, they both carry the same weight, which is like, can you tell a story that has some real emotion and is fun? You know, that's the same challenge uh, for either medium. If I even answered what you asked. <laughs> Thank you. Um, uh, Peter, I, I love the vulture bit, by the way. Uh, I just wanted to say that. Um, <laughs> But I, my, my question was, uh, how did you, I guess, come up with the four weapons that are, are that they're actually out hunting for? Um, I guess that was just one, one thing that I was wondering, because I mean, it's, it's a pretty cool, like what, what they're looking for, but I just wanted to like, how did you come up with out of all the weapons that are out there, these are the four particular ones that they're gonna hunt, hunt down? Um, you know, some of that is just stumbling in, in it along the way. And you know, the, it's very much, the plot is very much about um, trying to, uh, you know, the discovery about these weapons and finding these weapons. But of course, what that really is, is a road trip and a journey for these people to, um, to have, have this adventure. So um, I think the only thing we kind of knew at the beginning was the idea of this uh, glove. And um, <clears throat> uh, the rest of it, I think we just kind of stumbled on and it's really kind of sitting around the room and uh, around the writer's room and it's going like, maybe it's a magic rock. Maybe there's a tree stump that can talk. I mean, you know, it's like, those are the kind of ideas you're throwing out. And of course we didn't use those, but um, it's more of a discovery process that comes along. Some of it's intentional. Some of it is totally uh, happenstance, you know, in terms of choosing those weapons. And then the whole the story that's related to them also develops as you're going along. So we don't always know everything. We're just trying to stay ahead of the audience a bit. Hi there. Um, so I'm curious uh, which character you feel you relate to the most. Um, I know, obviously, Chris, you play <laughs> obviously a villain. Maybe you have some things in common. Who knows? Um, but <laughs> you never know, right? I mean, you never know. Um, so just curious if you have a character that you relate to the most or, you know, um, one that you would like to be more like. Chris. I would say I relate to Klaus, actually. Uh, I'm not an evil weasel in real life, um, uh, but I am very protective of my sisters and I am also easily exasperated if things don't go my way <laughs> so i would i would say that there's 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 a lot of uh, klaus in all of us um and um yes also doesn't like the heat and uh, enjoys meditating <laughs> which is something <laughs> that <laughs> happens happens later on in the series which is a lot of fun actually and um, yeah, but I would say I would say a a, a support of the family dynamic uh, is is something that I would relate to. Um, but um, yes, I'm I'm not anywhere near as as Weasley as him. Yeah, well, I mean, it's and of course it's hard not for anybody to relate to Poe because you got a, someone who is just they're fun, they're stumbling, 
they're making mistakes and they're trying to do the right thing, you know? And I think, uh, and that's basically what, how most of us uh, feel, except for Chris, he's not trying to, he's not trying to do the right. Thing. He's just trying to be a weasel. Um, you know, I think that's just kind of what makes that character uh, great. Is it, you know, you, it's like, man, I'm trying to do the right thing. And I just tripped and fell. So, um, but I do have a couple skills. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Great, well, thank you. Well, I started things off and I guess I'm the final question. So I'll leave it light. I just like to know uh, if you wanted to share any like fun fact or behind the scenes story with us that, I mean, our readers always love to hear a good behind the scenes story. I, I, have, I have one, which was actually, uh, it, was, it was behind the scenes. And I don't think Pete, I ever, I ever told you this before. But uh, I, have a, I have a lot of friends who are in the acting and film industry world, and I have other friends who know nothing about it whatsoever. So when I went round to uh, our friends for a, a little of a, a hangout on a Sunday, uh, there was one of our friends there and she said to me, so this new voiceover thing? And I said, yeah. And she said, uh, so you're playing a weasel? And I said, yeah. And she said, does that not get uncomfortable wearing that costume when you're <laughs> when you're in the studio? And it's it's gone down as folklore in our friendship group now that she believed that I was in the recording booth wearing a full seven foot weasel costume. Yeah. <laughs> so there you go. And my 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 story is that Chris actually was wearing a weasel costume, <laughs> but not in the studio. That's the crazy part. Yeah, that's awesome. Um, Thank you, guys. Yeah. We actually do have some time for a couple more. So, oh. Tanya, why don't you go? Okay, great. All right. So, Chris, would you rather play mm -hmm. the villain or the hero? Good question. Now that I have played the villain, I would like to play more villains because in the act in the acting world, actually me acting, I, I play good guys quite a lot, but I have most fun playing the playing the the guys that aren't so good. But in the animation world, it's it's it was interesting watching it because it's so much fun playing it, and I am rooting to do well. As, as in that role. However, they're, yeah, you're rooting for the hero. I want to be the hero. So I would say, I would say that, um, yes, I would say I'd like to be a hero next time. Oh, oh thank you. <laughs> Robin. Peter, could you tell us a little bit about some of these new characters that we get to meet? Um, yeah, so I mean, obviously, we meet them right away. Is Klaus and uh, Veruca Dumont, who are our uh, who are our villains, and who start this thing. And then, of course, um, the big one of the big drivers for this thing is that Poe meets a new friend, Wandering Blade, who has come from England, who's played by Rita Ora. <clears throat> and Rita has come. This is really her first uh, voiceover job. Rita has done incredibly great job playing the character of uh, Wandering Blade. So she and, she and Poe team up on this adventure. They run into Klaus and Veruca. They also meet um, a, a, a monkey named Rukmini um, who becomes, becomes part of their team. Uh, and then there's some, some other characters, um, I don't wanna give anything away, but who, um, who show up and kind of join the team or are after the team. Um, and we have a lot of new characters um, in this uh, series, and that's been really fun and fun for Poe to interact with um, as well. And it's because it's really kind of a road trip um, series. That's been really fun. I don't know if I'm leaving somebody out that I should mention, can't remember. I'm sure I am. So with, with, without spoiling it, what are, what's one scene what's what's your favorite scene to peter and chris what is your one favorite scene that you can share with us any scene any scene with the gauntlet is uh was is such was such fun to do because there's a lot of fighting and chasing and screaming and yelping and all these things but uh having now seen it finished beautifully done 
I mean, it's uh, it's real action packed and you turn the volume up and you're just like, wow, it's a real um, visceral experience. So uh, that was fun to do, but more fun to watch. Brilliant. Yeah, I can't, I, I, I don't know that there's a one scene, although you asked very specifically, but I can tell you, I can tell you the type of things. It's really the extremes that we go to. So there are some special effects scenes with kind of, what Chris is talking about with, with weapons and things like that, that are spectacular. And then I really love the quiet, emotional, like two person uh, scenes where people kind of get real about what's going on with them and what's, and what's happening with them. And just kind of, because it's just literal general, genuine emotion that really, that anybody can relate to. Um, <clears throat> so those, those are kind of the two things that I, that I really, um, that I really love the most. Every episode has at least one moment that's just like, uh, that I absolutely love. So can't choose my favorite baby. Thank you. Who's your favorite child? Um, so my last question is for both of you. Who do you think is a better or more confident fighter, Klaus or Veruca? Yeah. Hmm. They Different set of skills. I think I, th I think Klaus has better skills, but yeah. Veruca has more confidence. So she has a bit more of a carefree approach to battle, um, whereas whereas Klaus has the skills, but not necessarily the same amount of um, of, of confidence going in. So I think they're quite a good a good balance together. I think that's exactly right. Exactly right. Thank you. I kind of wanted to go back to Mr. Pink for a moment because that's like my favorite character. Uh, we, we do kind of touch upon like he had a, a different life before he had Poe. He had his own adventures. Will we ever see some of that like coming up in the future maybe? Coming up, well, we'll have to see in the future, I guess. Ooh, have to look look into it. Um, I love, uh, you know, I want to do as much as we can with, with Mr. Ping and with James. So... I think, um, I mean, uh, let's see, the antiquated statement for that is stay tuned. <laughs> yes. It's like, what is the online streaming version of stay tuned? I don't know what that is. <laughs> yeah. Keep watching. <laughs> I'm just telling you that I am happy to use James Hong and Mr. Ping at any time. Uh, what is the prime message you hope that viewers get out of this? series i think really you know simply i mean you know i think you guys have all seen the sort of first episode where poe basically loses his title and i think it's uh, and he wants to regain it and i think it's very simply that you're not your title you know you're not your name you're not what everybody else says you are um you know you're yourself and and uh you don't even need to change yourself it's like you need to change your point of view and your outlook and and know that you know, you are who you are, and it's not relying, relying upon a title or a <clears throat> what other people tag you um, as. That's really central to me, this thing. 